all my dear friends once again i greet you all in the most precious name of our lord and savior jesus christ today i would like to speak to you from a theological subject which is of far important as to our standing before the lord jesus christ bible says in romans chapter 3 verse 23 for all have sinned and come short of the glory of god this is the state of every man and woman who are born to this world but when we trusted the lord jesus christ in our heart as our savior and lord the very moment our sins were been forgiven and we have been justified before an almighty god thus we have received a righteous standing before the lord our god let me read a special portion of scripture from romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 11 let me read it first therefore having been justified by faith we have peace with god through our lord jesus christ through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of god and not only that but we also glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope and hope does not disappoint because the love of god has been poured out in the hearts of by the holy spirit who was given to us for when we were still without strength in due time christ died for the ungodly for scarcely for a righteous man will one die yet perhaps for a good man someone would even dare to die but god demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were still sinners christ died died for us much more than having now been justified by his blood we shall be saved from wrath through him for if we when we were enemies we were reconciled to god by the death of his son much more having been reconciled we shall be saved by his life and not only that but we also rejoice in god through our lord jesus christ by whom we have now received reconciliation this is the portion of the scripture today i would like to bring to your attention the subject which is discussed in this passage by apostle paul is the blessings of justification we have as i reminded you before when a sinner receives the lord jesus christ into his heart what happens that is stand standing before god is changed a sinner becomes a saint an unrighteous person become a righteous man and the one who was not uh, reconciled to god has been now reconciled to god in jesus christ actually this portion of the scripture is the continuation of the explanation paul has been giving in chapter 4 of romans a clear understanding of paul's argument is essential if we are to grasp the meaning of justification by faith many people in christendom they are much more confused about the fact of uh, justification 
what does it really mean most people they do not understand exactly its theological connotation even if they continue to read the book of romans so in this passage the holy spirit of god is writing through apostle paul the various blessings of justification that we enjoy in our day to day life what is actually justification theologically speaking justification is a judicial declaration by which god pronounces a sinner to be sinner to be perfectly righteous before god on account of his faith and confession on the substitutionary death of jesus christ on the cross that is what i said when a moment a sinner believes in jesus christ and confesses him to be his savior accepted him into his heart god declares him righteous he is no more a sinner those who are fighting for the 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 non security of salvation that means there are people on the social forum even who have been fighting with me and fighting with others when we present the assurance of salvation these people say one can lose his salvation but the bible says once you are justified you are justified forever once the righteousness of christ has been imputed you have become a righteous person in front of god and you have received a new standing and that is what this passage is speaking about all together it is therefore i say justification is god's declaration that the believing sinner is righteous in christ when you and i believed the lord jesus christ Father God acknowledged or declared us to be righteous in Jesus Christ because we have trusted his sacrificial death. It is righteousness put into our account. The righteousness of God or righteousness of Christ is put into our account. Sanctification is the righteousness imparted while the justification is the righteousness imputed we were un- unrighteous says the bible but god out of his mercy and out of his love he was pleased to impute the righteousness of christ in the account of the sinner in order that he might become a saint and have a proper standing before the almighty god so therefore i said righteousness is imputing the righteous actually it is a imputation of the righteousness of god into one's account that means a sinner's account while well, but sanctification is a righteousness imparted or worked out in and through the lives by the holy spirit so we should not be confused between justification and sanctification though this takes together at the same time simultaneously hap- happens the justification and sanctification without justification there is no sanctification and without sanctification there is no justification so what does the holy spirit of god do when a sinner believe in the lord jesus christ the spirit of god sprinkles the blood of jesus christ the hearts of the sinner and sanctifies him and simultaneously god declares him to be righteous having been imputed the righteousness of christ in the account of the believing sinner justification is our standing before god we have received a new standing but sanctification is our state here on the earth before others when we were justified our position or our standing before the almighty god was changed when we were sanctified by the precious blood of jesus christ by the 
a work of the Holy Spirit of God. Bible says that we have received a state here on the earth before others, that others see us as saints in Jesus Christ. And this is why when Apostle Paul has been addressing the believers in Corinth in chapter 1 of 1 Corinthians, he addresses them as saints in Jesus Christ because sanctification has brought a new state uh, here on the earth before others. And others now see us as God's people who have been sanctified by the precious blood and the eternal word of the Lord. Justification never changes. When people argue with me, with their stand that one can lose his salvation even after he is saved, when he uh, commits sins. I oppose the argument because Bible says a person can be justified only once before God. Therefore, the words in Romans chapter 5, it begins like this, having been justified by faith that we have proximity with God. Having been justified by faith, we have proximity with God. This is what the Bible tells us. So our first achievement or the blessings in justification is that we have been imputed the righteousness of Christ into our account. And therefore we have received the sanctification which is a new state we have before others. Justification is imputation of righteousness, whereas sanctification is imparting uh, the holiness standard into the believing sinner. And justification never changes, but sanctification does. Suppose a, a sinner who believed the Lord Jesus Christ, and he was imputed the righteousness of Christ into his account, and he was sanctified by the precious blood of Jesus Christ and by the Holy Word of God. What does it happen? His justification stands for good. That means once he is justified, he is justified forever. But his sanctification can be changed because though positionally he is sanctified the moment that he was justified, as he continued to live here on the face of the earth, the dirt and the filth of the world may affect the life of a Christian believer, whereas he may have the chances of losing his sanctification. But justification never changes. Therefore, from verse number 1 to 11, Paul is now tracing through with the various blessings that a believing sinner has received in Jesus Christ because he has received a justified stand before God. Number one, verse number one. Verse number one tells us, therefore having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. The first blessings of justification is peace with God. The Bible tells us, the sinner has no peace in his heart. For example, you read through the last five to six chapters of the book of Isaiah. When we come to the closer of each chapter, where we read, But my spirit says that the wicked has no peace in his life. Wicked has no peace in his heart. The Bible very clearly tells us the wicked person, the unbeliever, has no peace of God in his heart because his heart is in enmity with God. And he, is, he, has, he has not been reconciled to God. He has no justified stand in front of God. Therefore, here there is no peace with him. But what the Bible says here, Paul says, having been justified by faith that we have peace with God. We have peace with God and then we have the peace of God. Both goes right from the beginning of our justification. And that is what it says. Verse number 10 tells us that we were enemies of God. 
once we were the enemies of God. There was a time we were enemies of God. But now in Christ we have peace with God because the enmity was removed. When once the enmity is removed, the peace is established and therefore that established peace will continue to settle his life. In Ephesians chapter 2 verses 8 through 10, Apostle Paul says that he has made peace between the Jew and Gentiles breaking up the mediating wall. He has settled the peace. The Lord Jesus Christ has settled the peace, the eternal peace on the cross when he died on our behalf. When he sacrificed his body on our behalf, when he shed his precious blood on our behalf, the Bible says, when we trusted him, we have been justified and the righteousness of God has been imputed into our account and thus we have received a new standing before God. This is what the Bible tells us. Peace with God means that a problem with the sin has been settled forever. My dear friends who are listening to me now, May I tell you, the moment you and I trusted the Lord Jesus Christ into our life, our heart, as our personal Savior and our Lord, what happened? That God has established and settled His peace with our heart forever. And it was settled by the blood of Jesus Christ. And as a result, the Bible says that God became our, God became our spiritual father who have begotten us in the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, a justified believer, when he stands before God, that God is not, uh, we are not considering God as a judge, but uh, God as our dear Father, the one who loves us dearly. The first blessing of justification, therefore, Romans chapter 5 verse 1 says that we have peace with God. The most important thing in the life of a man in this world is not to procure money or to have greater possessions of lands and assets or to have educational calibers or to amass money immeasurably into our accounts. The most wanted thing in the life of a man in this world is to have the peace of God which surpasses all understanding and his heart, uh, enmity is removed. When the enmity was removed on the cross by the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, the Bible tells us that God settled peace with a man forever by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Number two. Verse number two of the first part of chapter five, Romans, it says, that Through whom also we have access by faith into this grace. We have access to God. Bible tells us while we were at sinners that we have no access to God. Because the Bible says God, God is a holy God and uh, we were sinners. Sinners cannot have or they could never have access to a holy God because that is quite contrary to his holy, holiness nature. God is holy in his essential nature. A sinner is a sinner and God is holy. A sinner cannot have any sort of access to a holy God. We read in the book of Genesis, the early chapters, God expelled the first man and his wife from the Garden of Eden where God's continuous presence was there. The man was expelled because a holy God could not stay with man in the garden because of his fall resulted in a sinful uh, nature. The Bible says, having been justified by faith that we have the peace of God and second blessing is that we have received the access toward God. The King James Bible tells us that we have proximity to God. That fearlessly and dauntlessly we can approach the throne of God and stand before Him. Pray before Him. Put up our supplications before Him. We can offer our worships and thanksgiving and praises to the Almighty God because we have received a righteous stand and we have 
we have received an access to God in Jesus Christ. That is the second blessing. Bible says in Adam, <clears throat> before our salvation, we all were standing in Adam and we were condemned. What we read in Romans chapter 6 verse 23, Paul says that for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And prior to that, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, I read, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. The wages of sin is death, says chapter 6, verse 23. We all were condemned before God. That was the natural result of the fall of man, which I effected in the Garden of Eden. But now in Christ, we have a perfect standing before God and can, therefore, enter in His holy presence. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 19 to 25, the Apostle Paul is inviting the holy worshippers, Come boldly near to the throne of grace, that you may receive grace. Paul says there. Now we have that holy boldness. So therefore, donlessly, fearlessly, we can approach the throne of the Almighty God, which is a seat of all holiness. Why? Because God in Christ has given us access to the throne of God. That is the second blessing of justification. Now let me go through the next part of the verse number 2. The second part of the verse number 2 of Romans chapter 5 says, In which we stand and rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Since we have received a new standing before God and we have received an access to the throne of the Almighty God, Paul says, speaks about the third blessings that we have as a result of justification. What is it? We have a great hope. What is that hope? The characteristics of that hope which is mentioned here? Hope of the glory of God. Hope of the glory of God. When I take this class, my heart is rejoicing. Because I really understand how God has effected this justification with His various blessings in the life of a believer when He trusted the Lord. I exactly know at the age of nine that I received well, the Lord Jesus Christ into my heart as my own personal Savior the Lord. It was in a Sunday school quarter meeting. At the age of nine when I heard first the gospel, that the word of God penetrated into my heart. The spirit of God convinced me that I was a sinner. And I did not uh, leave time to think about further. And I knelt therein. And I prayed before God. And I accepted the Lord Jesus Christ into my life. Invited Him as my personal Savior and Lord. I had no theological understanding of soteriology or anything as such. The moment when I received because I was still a, a little child. Uh, only age nine. But I trusted the Lord. A great joy filled in my heart. I knew that God had already forgiven me my sins in the Lord Jesus Christ because of the death that he suffered on the cross. That was the outcome which I experienced when I believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. Bible says, literally speaking, we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Paul says, we we what we boast in the hope of the glory of God. When we read Ephesians chapter two, verses eleven to eleven and twelve, Ephesians chapter two, verse eleven and twelve, Apostle Paul is speaking about the greater meaning of this uh, blessings that the great hope which uh, the Lord has given to us when we received Him. May I read those verses also in this connection? We read that we are brought near by his blood. But Paul says here, therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh. Paul is admonish, Paul was admonishing the believers uh, in the church at Ephesus to understand that therefore remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands. Those who, call, those who had the had experienced the circumcision. That means the Judaicists or the Jewish people, they considered these Gentiles as uncircumcised, who have no privilege to come to the throne of God, 
who had no hope and hope in the glory of the Lord, and who had no faith, who had no blessings, and who had no citizenship. They were aliens once. Paul says here. But verse number 12 again says that at that time you were without Christ. See, I, when I read this portion, I name them people without. Uh, many people today, we have, we have the diabetes issue. When we visit the home, the ladies in the houses, when they, they want to give us a tea or a coffee, uh, first of all, they would ask, will you take sugar? You want with or without. That means you, have, you need the sugar with the coffee or you want without. And here in this passage, Paul is speaking about our former status before that we received the Lord Jesus Christ. We were aliens. We were people without Christ. You see the plight of the sinner is well narrated in this verse number 12 of Ephesians chapter 2. He says, we were without Christ. And being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, we had no partnership with the citizenship or commonwealth of Israel because that was a special blessing that God had granted to a particular people who were descendants of Abraham whom God called and separated him from the Ur of Chaldeans. We read the story of the, the, the justification the call and the separation of Abraham, the father, in the book of Genesis chapter 12. The commonwealth of Israel has been the, the peculiar position and possession which the Almighty God had given to a peculiar nation who are known as Jews, Jews who were the natural descendants of Abraham, the father of the believing ones. And therefore Paul says that once, one, when we were Gentiles, when we, had, when we were at sinners, we, have, we had no hope, no Christ. We were aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise. The covenants of promise were given to the children of Israel and we were away from the strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. We had no hope at all. See, I tell you, often when I speak, I used to remind my audience that if you do not have water, people can live up to seven days, seven to twenty-one days. If you have no food, proper food or food diet, we can live forty to sixty days, even without food. Without water, you can live seven to twenty-one days. Without oxygen to breathe in, that you can save your life for maximum three minutes. Three minutes if you cannot breathe in, what will happen? The micro nerve systems in the brain and the spinal cord will break up because of the lack, lack of oxygen supply to the brain. The patient will die. So without oxygen you can live up to three minutes. Without water you can live in seven to twenty-one days. Without a food you can live up to forty or sixty days. Uh, but if you do not have hope to leave, you cannot leave even for one minute. We read uh, several stories of the, the young men and women who are uh, entangling in the act of suicide. They, some people, they youngsters, teenagers, they, out of depression, they go and end up their life by the act of suicide. Why? They lost all their hope. There is no hope to leave it. So when they see that no more hope to live for, and these people, they end up their life by act of suiciding themselves. If we do not have hope, we cannot leave. Paul says here, we were once the people of a peculiar characteristics. We were without Christ. We were aliens, in the aliens, aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And we were strangers from the covenants of promise. And then we have we had no hope and without God in the world. We had no hope and without God in the world. But what happened? The next verse. Paul says in the next verse, verse number 13, But now in Christ, Jesus, you who once were far off have been made near by the blood of Jesus Christ. I thank God for the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ and his reading of his blood because 
the blood has brought me near to the throne where, where we have access with God, where we have the settled peace of God, and where I have or procured my hope in Jesus Christ. So therefore the Bible says, we who were once without hope, without citizenship, without partnership to the common, common uh, wealth of Israel, and the people outside the promise of the blessing, uh, promise and his blessings, and people without Christ, without uh, hope and without God. In one word, people who were lost. But now we are made, or we are brought near to God with all the various blessings which Paul is narrating here. We cannot boast in good works because we cannot do good works and then achieve all these blessings. As a result of our endeavor, Bible says, but we can boast in the wonderful salvation God has given to us in Jesus Christ. We cannot boast in our, uh, our works because the Bible says the, all the righteous works of uh, man are unrighteous before God. They are just like the, 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 you know, God cannot accept it. None of the righteous works a sinner does or he feels that he is doing something that is righteous, God cannot accept because doesn't cop up with the standard of the holiness of God. But what he says, we have great hope because of the great sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ and the great standing which God has given to us when we trusted the Lord Jesus Christ. That is the third blessing. We have first one, that we have peace with God. Second one, we have access to a holy God. And third is, we have a great hope of the hope in the glory of God. And fourthly, verse number three and four. Verse number three and four of Romans chapter five. Paul says, but I'll read again that with those verses. And verse uh, four, three and four, Paul says, and not only that, but we also glory in tribulation, knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance character, and character hope, and hope does not disappoint, because the love of God has been poured out in the hearts by the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit who has given to us. What the beautiful verses are these? Verse number 3 and 4 says, the fourth blessings of the justification that we have received in Jesus Christ, it is, we have daily confidence in life. We have daily confidence in life. Paul says that we boast in, uh, in the glory of God. A true Christian believer not only has a hope for the future, but he has confidence in the present trials of life. See, I have often told you, more than nine physical disorders I have now. I am taking a lot, a handful of medicine every day for all my physical illness. But still, I have not only the hope of hope for a better future, but also I have the confidence in this present life. What is my confidence? The formula looks like this. Testing plus Christ. That means testing in Christian life plus Christ equals to patience. When God grants testing in the life of trials in the life of a believer, trials with the Lord Jesus Christ is producing patience. If you have no trials and a beard, we have no hope. And if you have no trials, or if we, if we have trials but we have no Christ then we have no patience. But the Paul says here, we have trials with Christ, that means trials plus Christ, we have patience. And patience plus Christ equals to character. When we are amounting in patience, that produces character or experiences. And then experience plus Christ equals to hope. What a beautiful order of Christian confidence is given here by the Holy Spirit of God. Let us look at once again. Paul says what trials plus Christ is equals to patience and then uh, patience plus Christ it gives us experiences and then experience plus Christ 
equals to hope. <clears throat> Paul says that we glory, that we do not glory over trials, by, but or about trials, but in trials. We are not glorying over the trials or about the trials, but we are glo we, we glory in trials. A true Christian, he glory in, in trials. Now comes to the last blessings in this section because of the uh, because of the justification we have received in Jesus. That is, we experience the love of God. Verse number five to eleven, Romans chapter five, five verse five to eleven. Paul says, "We experience the love of God. We who have trusted the Lord Jesus Christ into our heart, as we have received a." New standing before God as a result of the justification or imputation of Christ's righteousness into our account. Paul says, we have experienced the love of God. The spirit within sheds God's love to us and through us. The moment you and I believed in Jesus Christ, God justified us. He, he actually imputed his righteousness on us and uh, he has imparted his holiness into our life. As a result, the Holy Spirit of God began, begins, begins to dwell with our life. It is not just like as some charismatic people of Pentecostals are falsely teaching that one who, even after his salvation, has to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit of God. That is a foolishness. It is a false teaching. What the Bible says, the very moment that we receive Jesus Christ, when we give our hearts to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God cleanses our hearts by the sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ and then He begins to dwell in our heart. We have received the possession of the Holy Spirit at the right at the moment that we were being born again. So the Bible says here in the Apostle Paul, the Spirit within sheds God's love to us and through our life. God revealed His love at the cross when Christ died for those who were without strength, who were ungodly sinners. That is what Apostle Paul narrates here in chapter 4 or 5. While we were at sinners, that Christ had died on the cross on our behalf, and wherein he died for, he died for those who were without strength, those who were ungodly, those who were sinners, those who were enemies of God. Fourfold, uh, the inborn qualities of a sinner is mentioned here. And a sinner is without strength. Sinner is an ungodly before the Lord Almighty God. Sinner is a, an evildoer before God. He is sinner. And then he is in the enmity to God. Thus proving God's love is great. While we were yet sinners, enemies of God, and without strength and ungodly, if Christ had died on the cross, that it proves that God's love was great. That is why in John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse 16, Apostle John tells that for God so loved the world that he gave us his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God so loved the world. Somebody has well stated, Cross is not the cause of God's love at its climax. Cross is the place where God has demonstrated His love the maximum, beyond which that God cannot show up, or He cannot manifest how much more that He could say, uh, love the mankind. He gave up His only begotten Son on the cross. When He gave up His only begotten Son on the cross to become a sacrifice for our sins, God was demonstrating his love as word. Paul's argument is this actually. If God did all that for us while we were his enemies, if God had uh, given, given us the access to God, if God has sit, settled eternal peace with our heart, and if God has reconciled us unto the Almighty God in Jesus Christ, and if God had given us the great hope of glory, and uh, even he has granted us the confidence as to daily living. And then he says, while we were yet sinners, 
if God was pleased to give all these blessings only because we have trusted Him uh, on His sacrificial death, and He is asking here, we are, how much more will He do for us now that we are His children? Christ gave us all these blessings while we were at sinners. Then Paul's argument goes on, and He is asking, how much more will He do for us now that we are his children. I cannot explain, I cannot understand that how much more. The, the phrase that the Spirit of God is used here. That means, while we were at sin needs, if God had forgiven us, and if God had reconciled us unto God in Christ, and if he had given us the hope of glory, and if he had given us the access to the throne of grace, and if he had even he had given the hope Without any consent, then he is asking, how much more will he do for us now that we are his children? Because our present state is that we are the children of God. <clears throat> Paul says in verse number 9 that uh, we are saved by Christ's death. You and I are saved by the death of Jesus Christ. Had not Christ died on the cross, that we would never be been experiencing this salvation. Because <coughs> salvation is strictly and fundamentally on the basis of the death of Jesus Christ, which he experienced the cross. Verse number 9 tells us that. What does Paul say here? May I read it for you? Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. And he says, we are saved by Christ's death. And then verse number 10 he says, but we are also saved by his life. Christ has not only died on the cross. Christ has not only died on the cross. On the third day the Bible says that he was resurrected out of the grave. Yes, the redemption was accomplished by his sacrificial death. But the salvation was proclaimed by his glorious resurrection. So his redemptive death and the glorious resurrections are united together in its meaning. It makes us to understand that it is not only the death of Jesus Christ, but the resurrection accomplishes the process of our salvation. It says, as the power of his resurrection. <clears throat> as the power of his resurrection operates in our lives, we have received reconciliation, atonement, and settled peace in our life. May I stop here this short uh, 10 class on the caption justification, justification view in biblical perspective. Romans chapter 5 verses 1 through 11 we have been discussing about. Having been justified by in the Lord Jesus Christ, when we trusted the Lord that God had imputed His righteousness in our life. Our account was filled with the righteousness of God. No more we are sinners, but God has made us saints. We are, as a result, we have received a new standing before God. And then subsequently, God has imparted His sanctification into our life. That God made us saints, holy people, forgiven people, believers. So justification speaks about a new standing, while sanctification is our new state before the before uh, here on the earth before others. And so we have, as a result, we have peace with God, access to God. We have hope hope of the glory in God, and then we have daily confidence to live in this world of uh, sinners. And then finally, we experience the love of the Almighty God. It is foolishness and stupidity to propagate that uh, once we are saved and been justified, reconciled and received access to God's throne and uh, we, have the, we have received the hope of great glory that one can lose his salvation. No, never. The Bible says, you are justified. once you are justified, you are justified forever. Once you have been granted access to the throne of God, that access is always there. And the, the writer of the book of Hebrews is actually inviting the readers of the Hebrews now come with the holy boldness 
to, to near to the throne of grace. What a precious privilege God has granted for you and me in Jesus Christ. And not only that, we are now daily experiencing that confidence in our life. And we have therefore the eternal hope which is put in our heart. As a final result, we experience that great love which God has demonstrated on our behalf on the cross by giving up His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. My dear friends, you and I are once saved, we are saved forever. Once justified, we are justified forever. Once reconciled, we are reconciled unto God, into the family of God. And once we were adopted, we are adopted eternally as the sons and daughters of God. And once we have been uh, put on uh, the righteousness of Jesus Christ, we have been put on the righteousness of God forever. And there is not even a moment that God would again, again uh, proclaim a, a saint to be a sinner. No, there is no reverse order. There is a saying in English, the river, rivers never go, flow rivers. The river, rivers never flow, uh, flow rivers. You have to understand that. The river is actually starting from mountain top. And it's flowing down. It never flows reversed. In the same way, God's redemption is not reversed. God's salvation is not reversed. It eternal security is not recalled. Hold off. The Bible says, once you are saved forever, you are a child of God, and your names are written in the book of life, and your sins have been forgiven, and you have been eternally reconciled to your holy God. And therefore, you have achieved a new righteous standing in front of God. May God bless you and uh, the Spirit of God convince you to this truth which is given, given in the Holy Word of God so that you may, be have, you may be having more assurance about your salvation which you have uh, in the Lord Jesus Christ. May His name be glorified now and evermore in, your, in His service. Evangelist Titus from Edea God bless you all. Thank you.